So welcome everyone to our day six, the seven days of rest. And if, for those of you who can't see, we're looking at this absolutely beautiful water altar that Shanti Hart and Flo Bonamasso have put together. So I'm gonna just start it with this, if we could have that hand just stop for a moment. <laughs> we can just, this is actually great because the waters are gurgling and giggling. So honoring the sixth day of the, of the seventh day of rest and loving waters, today we're coming together to gather for our water wisdom share with one of our loving water council guardians, Shanti Hart and beautiful Flo Bonamasso. And we're just gonna take a breath together to really feel that relationship with our one source water within. And just breathing that in and, and feel the moisture in your hands. Imagine that this circle of light, our connected hands, hand in hand, and there's that beautiful sense of dampness. And our feet are connected to the earth, to the mother, to that very moist humus, the soil, the trees are just drinking that up. And feeling that relationship with the etheric waters. Yesterday we had this incredible opportunity to learn about the three dimensions of water. And then even we were even talking about a fourth dimension. So we're really drinking that in today. And again, remembering that beautiful watershed grid that's been building as we've been building the seven days of rest, connecting first from the Gifon Springs in Jerusalem, all the way to Uluru and to each one of our watersheds. And today we're gonna to have some fun with these beautiful water guardians. Um, coming all the way from Chicago where the water is crystalline waters. And this call is hosted by Loving Waters, a growing community of water beloveds and, and guardians and protectors, those of us who are wanting to really share our water wisdom practices and learn about our watersheds and really voice, be the expressions of of love and care for this one water, water as life. So with that, I'm going to just pass this beautiful crystalline talking stick over to Shanti Hart. And we will um, focus today on water wisdom practices, water altars. So we'll get to have some real beautiful information about that. So with that, I'm going to um, open up the call. Welcome everyone. For those of you who are on the phone, um, we will just share our names. I'm Shelly Darling and I'm in Sarasota, the Sarasota Watershed. And um, for those of you on the screen, remember that you can be on gallery view or speaker view if you'd like to really come in close to see and hear the speaker. So with that, Beautiful Shanti Hart, I pass it over to you, and you let me know when Barb's going to share, and I'll and I'll move it over to her. So welcome everybody. I can't uh, if you're speaking, can't hear you. Maybe you need to go over to your. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. Ooh. Not, not because the computer's on. Yeah, you can't do that. So you got it. So I would suggest. So I'm going to suggest to you to just get up and go over to the water altar and speak from there. And we'll be just looking at this beautiful water altar. Oops. Shanti, sorry, you can't, you need to have not have your phone over there. 
So everyone just keep breathing or holding, holding these beautiful beings while they're getting organized. You've got to leave your phone over on the other, shut it off. And go with the flow. Can I talk now? Is that messing everything up? Uh, that's better. Okay, because I want to talk for a few minutes before I go back to the altar. Okay. All right. So the reason that we chose today is that Barb and I, Flo and I are both uh, healers. And today we're talking about water as healer. Is this going to be okay sound-wise? Okay. Go ahead. We're talking about all of the healing uses of water. Remember a walk beside a river, stream, lake, or ocean. Walking on a beach with crashing waves is so soothing. You can even buy music just to hear that sound. The sound of rain is also soothing to many. From the gentle sprinkle to the torrential downpour. These sounds can also be purchased for use at bedtime or during meditation. Waterfalls are another sound that bring peacefulness, calm, and healing. I still vividly remember the very first waterfall I ever experienced. I was 25 years old. My girlfriend and I went to Maui to go camping. And we decided to hike up to seven sacred pools. And we hiked all morning, so hot. And we just came upon this waterfall. And I just dove into the water, swam across the pond, and stood under the waterfall. And now I know that that was my first um, wisdom keeper <laughs> that was walking with me because all of a sudden, I look over and there's someone standing on the side of the banks and he's, he's motioning to me, come here, come here. And I'm waving at him, hi. He's like, no, no, come here, come here. I swim over to the side and he points back to the waterfall and he says, you can't stand under that, rocks fall down from that. And I said, oh, really? And when I turned around to look at the waterfall and when I look, turned back, he was gone. So that was my very first waterfall. So they're pretty magical. I mean, water therapy resonates strongly with all of us. I mean, we are 80% water. We're conceived and gestated in liquid, and our first sustenance is liquid. We are all our waters. It's natural that we heal with and in water. We have hydrotherapy float tanks, ultrasound waves, vibrational sound bowls and tuning forks, singing and chanting. There's movement modalities that stimulate our waters, swimming, crawling, walking, the first three that all humans do in that order pretty much, running, skiing, snowboarding, dancing, yoga, qigong, tai chi, whatever stirs our waters can heal us. And now Flo Panamaso is going to give a demonstration about water and Himalayan singing bowls. And then I will follow with creating sacred space at home for our ceremonial waters. call we spoke of leveling up in our consciousness part of this leveling up for me was an intense class that I took in December um, of vibrational sound therapy this class really showed me the relationship of sound to the personal waters in my body and all of our bodies um, 
I have a brief demonstration of how water vibrates with sound. And excuse me just a second. I'm using water in the bowls to help you visualize what happens to your waters when the bowls are on and around your body. Shanti Hart, I mean, Barb. Yeah. We, we can't, you didn't share screen. You need to share the screen. Is it there now? Yes, now you gotta just click on um, light. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I'm using water in the bowls to help you visualize what happens to your waters when the bowls are on and around your body. When giving an actual treatment, there is no water in the bowls. But by watching the water in these bowls, you can imagine your waters reacting to the sounds, vibrating, creating sacred geometry, and helping to clear blockages. The vibrating fluids can both stimulate and relax. When, you, when our water-filled cells vibrate, it can release tension and induce relaxation, thereby reducing stress. The mind calms, blood pressure lowers, slowing the breath rate. The harmful effects of stress melt away and our muscles relax as blood flows more easily. Laying there with the bowls singing to your waters, you can feel each cell vibrating, communicating their healing intention to each other. This is just one of the many activities in which playing in water, on water, and stimulating the personal waters within our bodies can help us heal and make us whole. Okay. I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Oh, okay. I'm going to talk about creating sacred space in your home. This is one little example that I made. It's just a bread plate with some shells a drinking glass, which I've poured some blessing water in, and I have some pretty little beads in the bottom. And then I set this on top of it. Shanti, and a candle. Shanti. Yes, can um, you hear me? Yes, I just want to um, invite, there are people on the phone, and so when you, when you're saying this. Describe it more. Yeah, that would be great. Just describe okay. me what we're all seeing. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. I have a plate with seashells surrounding a center water glass. And around that I have a little headband of flowers encircling the shells and the glasses in the middle with the sacred water and I placed a candle on top of that and you could use that for a dinner party if you were with other water lovers which why wouldn't you always be of course you could just have that on the table and say we have our sacred water joining us for dinner tonight if that seems a little bit much for you you could just take a tiny little cup this is a really pretty glass candle holder, like for a votive candle. And you can just pour some blessing water in it and set a place at your table for that. And your waters are sharing space with you. This larger altar is one that I use. I like to recognize all of the elements when I create my altar. So I have a dish with seashells. I have another cup with some feathers for air and a wooden stick for earth. Down here by fire, I have another stone for earth. And of course I have my sacred water in the front. 
which I keep this all the time and I check it if it's not full enough, I take my spray bottle of water and I add a little water to it to keep it full. If you want to really spend every moment with your water, I, have, I suggest a little amulet. This is a carrying case that you can get at most crystal stores and put a stone in it. And I have a tiny, can you see a tiny little bottle with a cork, which I put a seashell in there and I put some blessing water in it. And you can wear that all the time. So when I'm wanting to honor my altar, I say, so I, sometimes I write it a letter, sometimes I just speak to it from my heart. And today I, I did both, I, I'm sharing this with you. Dear Blessing Water, inside this bottle is the roar of the ocean, the trickle of a creek. I can hear the waves lapping on the shore of the lake. I feel the stillness of the river at night when the only sound is a fish coming to the surface. I honor the ice that flows back into sacred liquid. I can feel my toes standing in your headwaters as you flow downstream. I see each morning, noon, sunset, and full moon where you were collected. I remember every single water lover who shared ceremony with us. We are all one with you, precious water just as you are one with us and as you are one with every drop that ever was. And I was talking about all of my water, full moon water ceremonies that I did this year and all of those things happened. And thank you so much for joining us today with Healing the Waters Within and we look forward to seeing you on our monthly New Moon Water Guardian calls. Please join us and join in the Full Moon Blessings every month as well. They're magical. Thank you. Aho. So everyone just take a moment to feel that pause and today on the seven days of rest it's rest in love loving wisdom and this is the wisdom of the water speaking the time that we experience and and offer our blessings to the water like we've been shown today how how just absolutely beautiful just again just looking at this beautiful water altar And just opening to some of these water wisdom practices. I'm chuckling because we have some great photos of Flo and Shanti Hart out at, out at Lake Michigan on the full moon. And I think it's below zero and they're out there crunching on the snow, gathering water, that dedication and devotion that we're all feeling. And as we share this water wisdom, as we have just a simple water um, altar or cup on our tables, uh, you know, and just sharing a little bit with someone, it's just helping to open up um, people's understanding the sacred relationship to water. And I'm just going to, I think I can just, I'm going to share a screen a minute and just show a couple of other little water samples of water altars for people that can um, see if I can pull this up. So, so here, this is just a, a, oh, sorry, you're getting my whole screen here. Sorry. I'm just going to move this so we can just see a couple of other. So these are just some traveling water altars that I had on my table in Australia. The bottle, the blue bottle is, is all the water ceremonies that have taken place from Sarasota, Florida to Nebraska to California 
and and to Australia. Just giving us some, here's another one. You can see this was an outdoor water altar where we have like 40 people that came for a public water blessing, honoring the waters in the we're, we're only seeing one, it's not rotating through. Oh, it isn't? Okay, thank you. No, we just see the one with the round bowl with the shells in it and the green stone in the center. Okay, hold on one second. Oops, sorry. Just stop the share for a minute and let me come back. I'll give you one more. Okay, now are you seeing it? Now do you see it? Yeah? Okay. So, um, again, just seeing we have the big water that's been collected from the body of water and invited people to bring their water. Um, sacred water pieces that are on the on the beautiful blue uh, silk scarf and water that people have brought their water bottles and we always um, invite people to put down their water bottles on the altar if, if that's what you feel and then after the blessing they get to take that home and they get to add some of the water into their water sacred water bottles um, as well so these are just some things that just adding to that beautiful water altar that we saw I'm coming back into seeing everyone so today we're just going to open the call and and to share your water practices what are some of the things that you're doing shanti heart and flow shared with us some of their poems and some of their, their the, that beautiful water altar and how sound affects our, that sound frequency affects our, our, our bodies. So would love to hear from people and keeping it concise so everyone can have a chance to share what moves you in a water blessing? What is it that you're called to share? And maybe it's just yourself, or maybe you're doing public blessings. And like um, Shanti Hart was sharing on, on Loving Waters, we're opening the way for people to feel more and more comfortable to, to, to share and host water ceremonies. So with that, I'm just going to open up the crystalline water talking stick and feel free. And those of you on the phone, make sure that you unmute yourself and just jump in. All right. So with that. Um, I'm complete and we'll open the call. And if you have any questions for Barb, um, Flo, or Shanti Hart, please just address them and I can um, put them on speaker. I would just like to jump in here. This is Maya, one of the water. Um, Loving Waters Council members. And I, I just want to thank Shanti for reminding us that it can be extremely simple, that one little glass container of water can be our altar, and that it's not so much how elaborate an altar is, but it's, it's that intention, it's that sacred intention of honoring. And so I like that she gave us that, that uh, reminder that it, it can be as elaborate as you want, but it can also be very simple. And just thank you, Shanti, for reminding us of that. Hi, everyone. It's Rose. I'm the green one. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to to tell you that I'm pretty new to this. Um, I have a diffuser. I'm really into essential oils and I make my own uh, sprays with water and essential oils. So I think in that way I have been honoring the water. And I'm also near the um, Delaware River and we canoe, we've canoed on the Delaware River and a creek and and it's it's such a beautiful time to be, you know, uh, on the water. But I just think that what you're doing is incredibly important in terms of raising awareness of the sacredness of our of the water, 
and and what we can do to honor the water. Now, I'm a real big advocate on clean water, drinking clean water, and not using plastic bottles, having our own containers, and and um, and that's a big thing I think we need to help raise awareness about. I don't know if any of you have heard of the aquasana, but that's the way I purify my water. It's a really, really good, affordable uh, way to drink clean water, and I think that people need to be more aware of that. And also, um, you mentioned about having recordings of water, and I've gotta say that that's one of my favorite um, CDs is I have a recording of, it's a babbling book, Brook, and it has, you know, very new agey kind of gentle music that goes along with it. But I love the water sound. It, it really soothes my soul like nothing else. So I think I've been a part of this um, uh, water lovers <laughs> without even being aware of it. So now that I'm more aware of it, I just want to thank you all. I just think what you're doing is so incredibly important. And I just, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rose, I just want to tell you something that um, you probably can't see, but your green screen is sparkling and it looks oh. like water <laughs> moving. You know, I, did, cool. I tried to undo the, the uh, green. I tried to find a way. I went into settings. I did everything today and it's still coming up green. So Shelly, I guess you know what that's saying. I, <laughs> I'm just going to go with green. I'm all green. So <laughs> thank you. Hello everyone. I'm Shannon MacArthur. I hope you can hear me. Um, I wrote something the other day um, and I'd like to share it with you. <clears throat> I wrote a note the other night in the dark as I was sitting outside in a moment of deep concentration and connection. I could see in my mind's eye all of us connected feeling the weaving, the pattern was forming, and it was amazing. And then I felt a flash of concern, unpleasant images crossed my mind, pimples and pustules, then mud holes and other wounds suffered by our Mother Earth. And then I saw an image I saw on Facebook the other day of a radiation containment facility being drowned in a sea. That worries me. When surrounded by soil, at least there's some filtering she can do, but when it's straight into her blood, it's an injection of poison that she is helpless to do anything about. She's beat. She's had a really hard millennium. <laughs> and besides, that's what children are for. And it's our turn. If we are the child of God's, I believe we are. Our mother is in imminent danger. And from how I see this whole thing through my me-framed glasses, it doesn't matter if you imagine differently. They tell us in emergencies to first make sure we're safe before helping others. But I guess we're getting that lesson. We have to take care of each other, including her because to save ourselves, we have to save her. The note I wrote says radiation containment needs our focus. I think she inspired the note and in my mind, she's given everything. She has the right to ask anything of us. Well, certainly of me, I speak for her. I won't speak for you. Speak up. Stand up, show up, now's the time. Bless you and all you do. And thank you for listening. Thank you, Elizabeth. Wonderful to see so many just incredible shiny faces. Thank you all for showing up today and following following the water's call. So I met um, Grandmother Agnes back in 2004, it was before she had become a grandmother <laughs> for the world. 
and um, I've been a, I suppose, a grandmother in training ever since. I wrote this poem in 1999, so, and I now recognize I've, I've been a water guardian my whole life. We had a canyon behind our house where I grew up in the High Sierra, and my mother protected it with others um, from the ski area from being developed. And so I have been a water guardian from my mother's knee, I suppose. But um, I wrote this poem, and I'd like to share it to you. It's called Our Pool of Dreams. Dear friend, do you remember? The fleeting moment, barely caught, tightly spanned between a sleep and a wake. Just before we've forgotten ourselves, as one fluid heart is beating in a moment when we may glimpse the expansive realm of our unlimited potentiality. When, as our thoughts thicken, they liquesce into opalescent pools and are remembered thus as dreams. When the silvery beads of mercurial memories puddle across the stretched taut planes of our consciousness as shimmering reflections, liquid mirrors of our own self. Come, can you recall kneeling instinctually on one beautiful mossy bank of one especially brilliant indigo pool laced with the glowing filigree of violet and gold light, where as you peek in, you see the luminous diffraction of your own face, an image of reverberating vibration, ever-changing rings of frequency resonating outwards towards the shores, Vibrant, sacred, scattering, alive, you. Yet, the eyes you gaze upon here are as steady as your heartbeat. Still, unwavering, they embrace you as your own other, as a cherished sacrament lost and now found. Do you remember? Then remember me for I am the one who holds you now in this mist, eyes peering through the portals of our souls, beholding you, beholding me. I am crouched like a wild one laughing on the other side of the thin, thinning veil, peering from the raised edges of my own deep pools of dreams. One small finger, gently touching upon the radiant reflection of self, caressing our faces transposed. We each reach past the veil, this delusion of separation, to shed a drop of the dream upon our tongues like a golden tear. Taste the sweetness of the source moisture now and remember us as thus, for clearly it is in this pure place of unborn potentiality we shall forever be remembering together our pure self as water's love so clearly those vortex water beings have been informing for many many years and when I found the, the water blessings, I didn't quite feel confident enough to believe that I could bless the water. There was something that took me a while to get the confidence to, to real, really believe I could stand and bless the water. And it helped when, it re, when I realized that and this poem helps me realize it, that really the water is blessing me always in every moment. And 
with every breath. And in the process of, of doing a water blessing, really I'm bringing myself to a place of remembrance and a place of resonance to receive that blessing from the water with others, which really makes it potent and powerful and effective. So just that reminder is that the water is always in blessing. And complete, thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. And um, <clears throat> kind of speechless, but I want to share something that's really important to something that we've really began to understand as we've been doing water blessings around the world, uh, specifically on the full moon. Is that when we share each other's water blessings, water poems, water songs, water intentions from around the world to each other's water blessings, even if you're alone. There's a page on Loving Waters that we're building with these poems. Please send them to us because we'll post them because what's begun to happen is people have begun to use them for their water blessings. And with that, this frequency of love that the water holds in the water speaking, something really miraculous and magical is happening. And that's all I'm gonna say right now and, and um, invite people, if you have more water songs or poems to come on tomorrow, because tomorrow we actually have um, an hour together. A half hour is really short time to, you see what happens, we just, something starts to bubble within and we start remembering and it starts remembering us as Elizabeth was sharing. So um, I want to just invite us, we will um, we will just stay on for just another few minutes. Um, and, and then we'll close this call, but we'll be coming back tomorrow for an hour and uh, be, be going in deeper from this, from this place. This is, this is the experience that we have on the new moon calls. We come in really deep and people start to share their love and, and, and expression. So I'll, we'll hold it open just another few minutes and if there's someone, but keep, to really keep it really, really concise. And, um, and then we'll just let this river flow on into tomorrow and we'll hopefully see you all there. So this crystalline talking stick is up for just a couple more shares and then we'll honor the timing and come back tomorrow. Shelly, can I ask you that um, as we leave the call, I could put up that clip of us on the full moon in the crunching snow and people could leave to it if you, if you want that as we finish. Okay. So you tell, you tell me when, and I'll put it up. What a lovely thought. I'm so glad. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> I just want to come on just for a quick moment here to ask if anybody here is uh, familiar with the Hawaiian Ho'oponopono. Um, that's something that um, a gentleman, Mark Anielski, and I have been talking about um, for a couple of years now. Uh, about going out and uh, doing healings of the water in the Ho'oponopono tradition. And so I, um, perhaps I'll, I'll bring uh, the song that I have heard con um, created for that tomorrow. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, this is Shalania, and uh, I um, live near the uh, what I call the river of the singing water of the whirling rainbow of peace. Uh, it has another name, but I prefer this name. And I think the important, uh, the important thing about water blessing is relationship and connection. And as an example, I was on the call yesterday for the first, well, actually I met with, um, I mean, I was doing water blessing in synchrony with you on uh, New Year's, but then I, yesterday was the first day it was on the, um, 
uh, you know, on the webcast. And so I would like to say that um, it's the connection that after the call, and I mean, I don't know when it started, but after I was finished with the call, I felt this just really beautiful energy. And I, of course I went to the door and looked into the backyard and this gentle, beautiful rain is flowing. So all day long, I seem like it went all day long until I went to bed and it, and it rained during the night. So to me, that is the connection and the synchronicity with water blessing. When I, uh, I think it's all about relationship and our connection, not just to the water, uh, but to all of creation. And many times um, in, in blessings, I will have, you know, certain birds come by at a certain t part of the ceremony, which is just like, yes, okay, I, that was, you know, uh, wonderful that they could feel it, you know. So I think it is uh, connection and um, the synchronicities that, that allow you to see that connection. And uh, that's just briefly what I wanted to say was that, you know, I thought that was really beautiful yesterday to have that rain coming after, um, you know, we had been sharing yesterday and uh, for the previous days and, and things like that. So thank you all for all the work that you do with the water. It's just such a beautiful, um, it's women's work. <laughs> it's women's medicine. So thank you for <laughs> <taking that. laughs> Charlie, you're an angel. <laughs> it's angels work too. I can, I can be a woman today. I can be a woman any day. My divine feminine <laughs> flows. It has no container. It's a, it's a gift of the divine presence of the mother. And Forgive you know me. I can't be concise, but I'm going to try to be concise. And today was just beautiful to hear about the sound bowls, which uh, I sit here with my crystal bowls, and I just read an article and it opened my mind to put water in the crystal bowls and charge the water with the sound vibration. And so just like the Tibetan bowl, charge the water. And we can take that water and use it to heal or send that vibration. Um, if we're, you know, rub it on our bodies, feed it to our plants. Uh, again, um, this week has just been so powerful to bring in um, not just water, but the light. Um, the sound and all of the energetic frequencies that we use and we somehow have forgotten to connect to the water or at least I have um, in, in the many ways that I celebrate water and so this has just been a wonderful week of gathering to hear each of you speak uh, from your hearts and uh, I just want to say thank you thank you thank you for uh, showing up and uh, being here with us so I bless you all and I'm complete. Okay, I'm grabbing this crystalline talking stick and um, just hold your shares till tomorrow because we need to honor the time here. We will end with Barb's movie. Um, just for a moment though, you know, these call this these calls and the, the deepening are gonna continue and we gather as loving water council members next week and we'll be letting you know um, we, we get gather on the new moon, but it feels to me that we'll continue doing these water wisdom shares and we'll let you know. So make sure you go to lovingwaters.life and sign in and you can send a note to us and please send us your, your poems so that we can put that up um, and it will go out in the next newsletter. So beautiful blessings to all. Thank you, Shanti and Flo and everyone and love you all and, and, all our loving water council guardians that are on this call today and from around the world. So with that, we're going to just end with this beautiful, the beautiful crystalline crunch and <laughs> we'll close the call. Go ahead, Barb. And it, it is raw. So if you want to leave, leave, but just look at the beautiful moon on Lake Michigan because it is, it is gorgeous. actually part three of our water ceremony for January 1st, 2015. And it's still extremely cold. It's about zero now with a wind chill factor of who knows what. But look at that moon, that super moon. And listen to Lake Michigan, is it gorgeous? Dr. Bart is here with our water that we have. So we let the snow melt. And then we did our blessing at home in the form of the poem and saying, and now this is returning, returning some of the blessing water to the lake.
we added our blessed water to there. So now we're going to see if when she throws it back in the water, it might just freeze when she throws it. Who knows? So this is not just a water blessing. It's possibly a scientific experiment. <laughs> This is rather precarious. This is all ice. So this ice. is all ice. So we're just going to add our water to the ice that is. All right, we're gonna see what it, we're gonna see if it freezes in midair. Water, we love you. Water, we respect you. Water, we thank you. Oh, it ate it. it, it. Splash. We heard the splash. We heard the splash. Love you, water. Love you, Lake Michigan. Thank you, Luna. You are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Supermoon. Maybe I should do this. I don't know if that works. <laughs> there I am. Bye. <laughs> okay, here we are for part two. Thank you, beloveds. <laughs> we will see you upside down or inside out. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there and love you. And, and tomorrow, um, tonight I'll be sending out, we'll be having Jim Petruzzi and his wife coming for ceremony tomorrow. So come join us. Um, Sanctuaries of Mother Earth is their, um, their voice and expression. And we'll see you tomorrow. Many blessings.